Mad Cave invites readers to visit Exit City, a technological haven built off the California coast where anything and everything goes, including murder. Is Mad Cave's latest cyberpunk thriller all it's cracked up to be? Let's find out in our review of Exit City number one from Mad Cave Studios. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Exit City number one. Mad Cave CEO, Chief Creative Officer, and writer Mark London expands his creative reach into broader genre titles with a cyberpunk-ish murder mystery involving corrupt cops, corrupt companies, and a corrupt government in a truly unique location. Fans of Blade Runner will find the similarities eh, appealing, pretty much, and readers with a taste for hard-boiled detective stories may take a shine to this issue. Let's jump right in. Exit City number one narrates the murder conspiracy in question from the perspective of one of the two leads, Detective Eve Miller. The narrator recently transferred to the central section of Exit City, a floating city that looks like a massive collection of oil rigs. Exit City was built off the California coast by proto-technologists, as they're described here, who wanted to create their own country state after their attempt to help California secede from the United States fail. Well, that's quite a mouthful. If the concept of Exit City sounds too hard to get your arms around, Mark London smartly uses Miller's narration with an organic context to lay out most of the particulars. The motivation behind Exit City's foundation doesn't seem to rise much above a bunch of guys who are very smart and very technologically savvy getting together and saying, eh, we don't want government telling us what to do, so we're just going to make our own country. But the explanation is good enough to get things going. So the investigation in question begins when Detective Miller arrives at her new assignment in the Central District to meet her assigned partner, Detective McCormick. The detectives are immediately at odds with each other, partly due to their incompatible personalities. They're both very strong-willed and not shy at all <laughs> expressing their opinions, and partly due to their research on each other before meeting. Miller fits the definition of a dirty cop. She's willing to lie, cheat, and steal to close a case. McCormick, on the other hand, is... Not dirty, he's very by the book, but he's also very eccentric and weird for reasons we'll find out in a minute. Again, Mark London wisely chooses not to have Miller and McCormick get along with each other for good reasons, creating a contentious relationship that's rife with drama. McCormick is the seasoned veteran between the two, so he takes the lead in driving around, heading to the crime scene, doing all the things that detectives should do, but it's clear those two strong personalities are in for some major headbutting. And so now we get to the heart of the matter when it comes to the investigation. McCormick receives a call from his chief to investigate an unusual occurrence that the department needs to keep quiet. When McCormick and Miller arrive on the scene, they find a car wrecked beyond all <laughs> survivability with two dead bodies inside. The vehicle appears to be partly mangled and partly crushed. Miller quickly learns the deaths were carried out by experts when it's revealed all avenues of surveillance, including local CCTV cameras, any kind of detection, surveillance equipment, have all been blacked out before the deaths took place. Miller is surprised to see that McCormick susses out unusually incisive details about the crime scene while he talks to the inside of his jacket. Okay, in that last bit, you're probably wondering yourself, huh, whoa, wait a minute, what? <laughs> why, why is he talking to the inside of his jacket? What's that supposed to mean? Don't, don't worry, don't fret. Describing the situation in a review doesn't do it justice, but it makes sense when you see it on the page. And it makes even more sense when Miller later finds out the background of a special gadget McCormick keeps inside his coat to help him do his job. It sounds weird from the way it's described, but in context, it does make sense. The issue concludes with a confused cyborg, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, out of the blue, making a very bloody mess inside a local bar. And that's the end of the issue. I mean, there's a lot more that happens after it, but there, there's too many finer details that we can't describe without spoiling the whole thing. And we want to leave a little surprise for you. But overall, Exit City number one is certainly an original take on creating a not-so-future dystopia as a setting for an intriguing murder mystery. Mark London's mystery setup and character development are pretty top-notch, and the cliffhanger, which admittedly comes out of nowhere, will absolutely grab your attention. Let's switch gears and talk about the art for a second with some good news, which is always a good thing, and some bad and even in this case sad news. Exit City number one is our first exposure to Carl Mostert's work outside of DC. He's mostly known as a DC artist from your point of view. And the results look fantastic, so that's a positive. We want comics that look great. Comics are a visual medium. That makes sense. Sadly, however, Mostert passed away on October 2nd, 2024. So it's unclear how far he worked into the series. We don't know. We don't know who's going to pick it up after him. 
or if readers should expect a delay. We don't have any of those details. When we hear them, we'll let you know. Regardless of the effect Mustard's passing has on the title, our sincere condolences go out to Mustard's friends and family. We wish them all well in this difficult time. Final thoughts, what do we think about Exit City number one? Launches a cyberpunk tale of murder and corruption in the world's most technologically advanced city. Mark London's futuristic crime thriller successfully captures shades of properties you may be familiar with like Blade Runner and, and Alita Battle Angel, to name a few. With a little less pop, this is a more toned down future dystopia. And the late Carl Mostert's art looks fantastic, although of course we are saddened to hear the news of his passing. Therefore, Exit City number one earns an 8.5 out of 10. Mark London's past stories typically fall into the fantasy realm or fantasy genre, but his latest forays into more sci-fi heavy types of storytelling show promise. But what do you think? Do futuristic detective thrillers tickle your fancy? Leave a thumbs up if they do and drop a comment below if you found this review helpful and if this is the first time you've heard of this title and we're trying to get more exposure to lesser known comic properties. So if this is the first time you're hearing about this title, let us know in the comments. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review. Check out the variant covers and preview pages and buy this comic to help support the channel. Of course, your support is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.